Good morning and welcome whenever you're joining us for this, our fourth Sunday in Advent worship service. It's good to be worshiping together, even through this digitally mediated means. Everything that you need for this service can be found in your bulletin, which is linked uh, either in the comments on the Facebook uh, event page or uh, in the email that you would have received leading up to this Sunday service. Just a couple of things to note. Uh, we will not be having our birthday party for baby Jesus celebration as we typically would this time of year. However, we are collecting items for Hephatha's Strong Baby Sanctuary. And if you would like to make donations to that, uh, they can be dropped off in our east entryway. I uh, also want to highlight, as this is the fourth Sunday in Advent, that our uh, Christmas at Christ Savior times are found there in your bulletin. We'll be um, streaming a worship service at 10 a.m. in the morning and then available all, all day, uh, but also having three drive-up services at uh, 3.30, 5 o'clock, and 6.30 p.m. Uh, so just wanted to let you know that those are options that you can take advantage of this Christmas Eve. Uh, and then also the, on Christmas morning, we'll be streaming a service at 9.30 that then will as well be available throughout the rest of the day. So... Want to let you know about those things, uh, but let us enter into this time of worship together. Advent is a time to bind up the brokenhearted for past wrongs that prevent us from moving forward, for any bitterness that scratches our soul, for relationships left in decay and neglect, for any action that has wounded us or by which we have wounded others. Come, Lord, make all things new. Grant that we might have the peace of Christ as we wait, the love of Christ as we act, the grace of Christ as we speak. This morning we light four candles. The first candle is the light of hope for those in times of waiting. The second candle is the light of hope for those who are wearied by the circumstances of life. The third candle is the light of hope for those eagerly watching for God's promised glory. The fourth candle is the light of hope for those who carry the wounds of life. Today we acknowledge our pain and the pain that we have caused others. As the light shines, we turn to the Savior who came to rescue the lost, to help the hurting, to bind up the broken. Merciful God, 
Advent reminds us that you left heaven's majesty to walk among wounded people in a broken world. We thank you that your love knows no boundaries or limitations. No wound of this earth is greater than the wounds that you came to heal. For all who suffer this day, light the way, O Lord, toward the promise of healing and wholeness made known in you. Amen. May Christ come to us to live in our hearts, to lead us in righteousness and holiness. The first reading this morning comes from 2 Samuel, beginning with the seventh verse. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And the evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your servant and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Here ends the reading. Second reading is from Romans chapter 16. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages and is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the commandment of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. For this morning's gospel, I ask Sandy to print all of Luke 1, 26 through 55, uh, but I'll be focusing on verses 39 through 55, which picks up uh, at the bolded font down the, this, the column as you turn the page. So, our gospel for this morning, according to St. Luke in the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out, and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. 
Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of our Lord. This week in Advent, our attention is focused on Mary and her own experience of waiting and attending to the arrival of God in the world. Following the angel Gabriel's announcement of Mary's pregnancy, Mary was faced by the enormity of the task before her. A young woman, not yet married, growing up in a small town of an oppressed people, she was to be the one to bring the Son of the Most High into the world. The foretold Messiah who would sit on the ancestral throne of David and whose kingdom would have no end. Quite the responsibility for a teenager from Nazareth. When I was a young teen, I was maybe responsible enough to look after the family hamster. Confronted with what lies before her, Mary set out to seek the company and the counsel of her kinswoman Elizabeth. Elizabeth was in the sixth month of her own unexpected act from God. She who had been considered barren had conceived a child in her old age, an answer to the prayers of Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah. If anyone might be able to receive the fantastic, outrageous news of how God was at work in the world through Mary, perhaps Elizabeth could. I always think it's worth naming during our Advent season of waiting and expectation just how scandalous this account of Jesus coming into the world was for Mary. You know, rather than the joy that Elizabeth and Zechariah shared, Mary's pregnancy would have brought shame on her and her family. By cultural practices and religious law, her fiancé would be within his rights to divorce Mary or possibly even have her stoned to death for her apparent infidelity. Yet, in full knowledge of all the potential ways that this could go wrong, Mary responded by saying, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here in 2020, in this time of a global pandemic, it's easy for our Advent waiting and expectation to be shaped by the weariness of this season. For our longing of God's breaking into the world to be framed by an anticipation of relief and return to normality. Of vaccines and the prospect of gathering together again without fear of how we might be endangering those who we care about. And while it is indeed right and proper for us to name how the good news of the gospel proclaims God's desire for us to experience healing and wholeness, rest and reprieve, let us not fall into a flat and singular expectation for how God breaks into the world and brings transformation. Let us not place our understanding of God into a box so small that we miss out on the radical and scandalous ways that God's grace shows up in our lives. Sometimes the arrival of God calls us to live and act in ways that are uncomfortable. Sometimes the gospel sets us on a path that breaks with what is familiar or expected within our families. Sometimes preparing the way of the Lord means that we have to let go of our expectations, our conventions, or our traditions in order to cling to what God is doing. Maybe you can recall a time where your faith directed you to follow God in a way that wasn't marked by relief and comfort, but rather with difficulty and uncertainty. Maybe you 
know and empathize with something of Mary's experience of her faith in God, taking her off the map onto a path with some intimidating unknowns ahead. So Mary goes to her relative Elizabeth. And while Luke doesn't tell us what is going on in Mary's heart and mind, I think it's reasonable to imagine that Mary may have had some nervousness, some anxiety about announcing her news. And for me, I love the image that we hear in Luke of the Holy Spirit just jumping into the situation and giving Elizabeth the heads up right away. Almost like God is showing up and saying, you know what? Mary has a lot on her plate to worry about already. Uh, Elizabeth, why don't you just jump right in and let Mary know that you've got her back? Because it is a gift, isn't it, friends? When we connect with that relative, that friend, that mentor or guide who knows something of the road we travel, who's able to say, I've got some idea of what you're going through, who can reassure us that we are not alone in the uncertainty and ambiguity, when we have someone who is walking with us and accompanying us through the unknown. For Mary, Elizabeth's words are reason enough for her to burst into song. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In this spirit-filled gathering of the two kinswomen, Mary lifts up a song of liberation, proclaiming God's faithfulness in caring for the hungry and the lowly and bringing low the proud, the powerful, and the rich. Mary and Elizabeth, these two ancestors in our faith, model for us in our gospel today how our faith calls us at times into these two distinct ways of faithfully attending to what God is doing in the world. Mary, boldly stepping out in faith, defying the expectations of her family and her community, trusting that what God is doing through her will be a blessing, not just to her and her family, but the world. And Elizabeth, thankful for what God has done in her life, yet still attending to the urging of the Holy Spirit as it draws her attention to the scandalous way that God is at work in the world through Mary's faithfulness, offering Mary respite and support as Mary takes up the work of what God has put before her. As we live out our Christian faith today, we may find ourselves, like Mary, breaking from what is comfortable or familiar in order to follow God's leading to care for the world. Maybe that looks like a challenging conversation with a loved one when it would be more comfortable to simply not make waves. Perhaps it means finding new ways to stay connected or be in community over the holidays so that we share in the work to contain the coronavirus and keep all people safe. Or perhaps, like Elizabeth, you find the Holy Spirit prompting you to walk with and support someone in your life as they go through a challenging time that still yet rings with some familiarity for you and your own experiences. However, you may find yourself experiencing and anticipating the arrival of God in our world, may you recall during this season of Advent the faithfulness of our holy parent. May the Holy Spirit move around and through you in ways that sustain you for the journey and fills your heart with songs of liberation and new life. And may you find comfort and respite and restoration in remembering that Christ has come into the world and that Christ continues to show up. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join now in professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we receive and recognize the offerings that we've received throughout the week, those that have come in through the mail, as well as those that have come in uh, through the direct deposit or the donate button on our website or the text to give option that's outlined in your bulletin. All of these many ways that we continue to remain committed to supporting the ministry that God has called us to here in this community, providing others with an opportunity to experience in a tangible way God's promise of new life and hope and healing. Uh, Also, uh, during this offering uh, that we'll be receiving, we're going to have music that was pre-recorded by our choir during pre-COVID times when they were able to gather. Let us confess our sin as we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. Almighty God, we confess to you and to one another that we have not been faithful to you. We have turned our hearts to selfish and short-sighted things. We have neglected our neighbors. We have hurt others, and so we have hurt you. Help us, Lord. Forgive us and lead us that we might be prepared for all the ways you come to us. Our God does not desire the death of sinners, but that we would turn to him and live. 
in the mercy of Almighty God, your sins are forgiven. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Gathered in this way as the people of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's word promises us that God is with us every day of our lives. Though we continue to feel the loss of being able to gather together around this table to share in holy communion with one another, Christ yet binds us together. While we wait to again receive in person the body and blood of Christ, we still receive the grace of Christ each day. This is a promise that God makes to us in the waters of baptism that join us to Jesus' death and resurrection. At this time, I invite you to take water from wherever you may have it and make a sign of the cross. May you recall again God's promise to seal you with the Holy Spirit. And may you receive anew the mercies of God's grace which sustain us in this life and the new life in Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church and all of creation. Lord Jesus, you continue to show up in our lives in ways that bring relief and comfort, but also challenge and transformation. Open our hearts to be receptive to the work of your gospel. May our lives reflect your ways of compassion and justice. Help us to follow you boldly, even when the path takes us away from that which is familiar. Sustain us as we strive to keep your way and remind us that we are not alone in the journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as the initial distribution of the vaccines for COVID go out, we pray that the process would go as smoothly and successfully as possible. As we continue to practice physical distancing and abide by the practices recommended by health officials, help us to endure this season of waiting. We pray as well that you would sustain all of the medical professionals who continue to work on the front lines of caring for people affected by the virus, as well as the families who've lost loved ones or who are facing economic insecurity due to the pandemic. Work through your people, O oh God, to care for the needs of vulnerable folks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Awesome Creator, we give you thanks for the many gifts in our lives. In a time when we have had to adapt so much, we thank you especially for the things that still feel normal and for the new rhythms that we've established. We thank you for the promise of hope that you bring as we move towards the celebration of Jesus' birth. And we thank you for the many opportunities to join with you in bringing your healing to this world. We thank you as well for all of these things that we name before you now, silently, aloud, or typed into the chat for the community to give thanks together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who dwells with us, we pray this day for all who need your care in our community as they live with illness or are awaiting recovery. Claire Murky, Vi Medhurst, Sue Jarman, 
Jim Modersky, Ken Wentland, Bob Will, Scott Willie, Cheryl Keller, and for all those for whom we pray before you now, silently, aloud, or typed into the chat for the community to hold in prayer together. Hear their prayers and ours. Bring them all they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your love and faithfulness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. is calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley should be filled in. Every mountain should be made low. The crooked road shall become straight, and the rough way smooth, and all of mankind will see God's salvation. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. God loves you. You will give birth to a son and will name his name his Jesus. He will be great and will be ca called the son of the most high his kingdom will never end. Nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May it be with me, just as you have said. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Through the Holy Spirit, she will give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. I will do as the Lord commands, and Mary will be my wife. And Joseph took his wife, Mary, to Bethlehem, the city of their ancestors because Quirinius, the governor, had called for everyone to report for a census. Things were way different then. While Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born. Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and laid him in the manger with the animals nearby because there was not one single room open in the inn.
Christ has come among us, the lost was radiant light. Hear ye the strain, hear the angels sing. Glory, hallelujah, to the newborn King. Peace is on earth, good will to men. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. wise ones who knew that a savior, the, Ma the Messiah, was expected soon. They followed a special star and began their journey. We have traveled many miles to Jerusalem. Where is the one who has been born the king of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and we have come to worship him. I'm Queen Herod. I would like to know that too. Go. Go on to Bethlehem and search for the child. When you find him, Come back and tell me so I may also go and worship him. The wise ones followed the star until it stopped over the place where Jesus was. They bowed and worshipped him and gave gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone all around. The shepherds were terrified. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ our Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all on earth. Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go see what the Lord has told us about. Let's go see the baby. Shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens showed a holy light. Go tell on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell on the mountain, come with me. The shepherds feared and trembled, but low above the earth, ring out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And what was God's salvation, that blessed Christmas morn? Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. all right and the baby in the manger the shepherds spread the word about this child all who heard were amazed the shepherds returned to their flocks glorifying and praising god for all they had heard and seen which were just as the angels told them glory glory to god peace on earth Glory, glory to God, God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest.
and peace to all the earth. Peace to all. Glory to God. Peace to everyone everywhere. Glory to God. a child is born, to us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Name him Jesus. Lord save. Call him Emmanuel. God is with us.